Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray, and today I'm joined by just one of my co hosts, uh, Ricardo Martinez. It's uh, Jerry's birthday today as we film. Um, and today we are interviewing the great Felix Creason, uh, a developer, entrepreneur, investor, and uh, he is notably uh, co founder and CTO of the largest electronic payments processor in Romania, uh, Netopia. Um, and also was co-founder of Romania's first cryptocurrency exchange, BT BTKO.io. Um, but yeah, uh, Felix, first off, um, how are you doing? Uh, and is there anything else you want to let people know in, uh, in a quick introduction to yourself? Yes. Hello. Uh, good evening. Good afternoon. Good uh, morning, wherever you listen to that, uh, that, this podcast. Uh, indeed. So I'm... Um, I'm uh, involved in this uh, crypto as well in the traditional payment uh, area, and I'm I've been dealing with crypto related stuff for probably around ten years uh, by now, and since about 2015 we also do crypto in a business uh, environment, meaning that we provide services that are based on crypto. Nice, thank you very much. Well, I uh, well yeah, I'll, I'll dig straight into my. Um... My first proper question, because um, Sarah is interested to talk to someone who, you know, you've done, it looks like you've done, well, two very big things as it is, right? Like an exchange and a payment processor is pretty, pretty huge. Um, but yeah, I guess um, as someone who's obviously like working currently in electronic payments in Romania, uh, you have quite a unique position or a view because you've got, got access to a lot more information than most ordinary people would. Um, so I guess... Uh, how uh, how how have you seen uh, the payment landscape itself, just the online mm -hmm. payment landscape, adapt over the last sort of decade in Romania? Like, is crypto becoming more of a part of the payment world, or just sort of stable? Like, I guess, like, how how have you seen that adapt over time? Um, let me first start from the traditional uh, traditional area, whereby we we've seen even outside of talking of, of any crypto we've seen a, a very big dematerialization of money so virtually every transaction or I, I should say most transactions at least those done in the urban uh, areas are uh, electronic transactions anyway and i will come back to to this because it, uh, this is a, an important aspect but uh, now I will go to the to the crypto part, and I will make uh, make make a reference to a couple of uh, reports done, I think, by by ING, uh, which uh, analyzed uh, or, or I probably should say interviewed a bunch of people in various countries around uh, Europe, and their conclusion was that uh, Romania is, uh, I think, that the second. Uh, country in Europe in terms of crypto awareness. And now being on the ground here, I'm very well aware that a lot of the people would say that they are aware of crypto and they maybe even have crypto uh, just because, I don't know, they use uh, uh, one of these uh, neo banks and they offer some crypto like contract for difference or other derivatives and they, they would consider that as, as interacting with crypto. But uh, uh, nevertheless, I think that uh, uh, the, the public perception is here, although it's not always a positive perception, but uh, you know, at least uh, in, in terms of people knowing that uh, this thing is here and uh, maybe would have a, a significant impact in the future then it's it's a good uh, it's a good thing yeah and i guess like um because you say like obviously yeah there's a there's a good perception not always positive obviously um but i i, I figure i mean i'm making a big assumption here but I, I would have assumed that in romania um and surrounding countries that like the 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 view on crypto is probably slightly more positive than it is actually in like the UK and the US, as a, just a guess from my experience in other countries, like when I visited Brazil and other European countries. It, it is, and uh, this is uh, mainly due to the fact that there were no, I mean, in the, in the bigger countries or in the more developed countries, the 
negative view tends to come from from the top meaning that there are there are some people that are in government or in government related uh, institutions like uh, let's take an SEC or uh, some FINRA or whatever, that would say uh, something which would be construed as being uh, negative towards crypto. In here, the, at least uh, uh, with some very notable exceptions, uh, the, the talk about crypto tends to be neutral, meaning that, for instance, the National Bank tells people we don't have anything against it. Just note that uh, it's not an investment uh, uh, instrument and you are very likely to lose money if you put money because let's face it, um, uh, at least up until I would say now, uh, a lot of the uh, retail um, driven um, involvement has been uh, driven by uh, potential gains, meaning that I buy now cheap and I sell later more expensive, therefore I make a profit. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think that because of the, the fact that uh, at the top level, people tend to be more neutral, then, then the, general, uh, uh, the general view is uh, somehow positive or leans towards being positive. And uh, of course that there are, there will be people and it's no it's no surprise that first of all there are people that there, there is a specific category of people meaning that if you take the intersection of uh, by age and then by sector in which they work, the older they are and the more they work closer to the financial sector, they tend to have a, a more a negative view. So if for them, for them, it's uh, somehow, uh, although they, in theory, they know very well how the, the fiat money works, they tend to think that uh, uh, it, because nothing backs any of the crypto uh, that, are, that are widely used, uh, they, they cannot be valued as much as they are because uh, I don't know why what's the, the reasoning behind, but because nothing backs it, uh, it's not real and it's a, a Ponzi scheme and uh, everybody will uh, cry in just a few months and uh, whatnot. Does the majority of the trading taking place in Romania happen on exchanges like your exchange or does it happen in like peer-to-peer -peer exchanges like local Bitcoins or Telegram groups? I... I'm pretty sure that most of it takes place is on, on regulated exchanges. Uh, and uh, I want to underline that what we operate is not like a full exchange. We, we merely provide a sort of a brokerage uh, solution for our merchants because we come from the, from the payment processing side. So we allow our merchants to uh, accept uh, cryptocurrencies in exchange for their goods and services. And uh, if we take this uh, type of service uh, uh, out and then we take that th there would be some peer-to-peer -peer transaction happening, but I would say that 95% happens on, on uh, exchanges, regulated or less regulated uh, exchanges, yes. And, and mm -hmm. I, 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 can continue, I can continue on that, or maybe if you have other questions, I, I can stop now. But I, I would say that due to the fact that a lot of people uh, interact with crypto through exchanges, that creates, even for people that, that are into crypto, it creates a very different view of what crypto means. And I'm, I'm here referring to this custody of assets. And this is something which I cannot uh, outline. And every time I have the chance to talk about it, I, 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 I try to, to make people understand that uh, letting somebody else manage your whatever crypto assets you have manage it, managing by, managed by somebody else, it's not, uh, it's not a good idea. If you really want to, you need liquidity and you want to do a trade, then... Uh, send from your wallet, do the trade, um, withdraw to your wallet. Not, uh, don't leave uh, funds uh, sitting too much on, on this exchange. That's awesome. That's literally, I was going to ask you that question like right, right yes. after, because obviously yes. you mentioned about um, 
because you mentioned about people having exposure to cryptocurrencies via yeah. like these uh, tech banks and things, things like Revolut, for example. Yes, UK exactly. Being purchased. Exactly. Um, and I, I was going to ask whether you know what your opinion was on that. I suppose. It, 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 from your experience, I guess, and understanding, and I suppose, I don't know if you guys keep track of like the wallets that make crypto payments through your processing um, company, um, but like, are you, are you finding that the majority of people are using custodial services or if it's, uh, is that yes. what you're finding? Yeah? Okay. Yes, yes. And, and, and uh, I, would, I would now go to the two biggest problems that we have in, in providing this type of service for, for our merchants. The first, of, of, okay, now I will, I will go a bit maybe technical, but not really technical. And I would say that um, because of the nature of, of all the cryptocurrencies, uh, uh, we are very bound to a specific uh, uh, period of time in which we need a transaction to be performed. And that's why we generate, uh, we, when we generate uh, Bitcoin addresses, we um, uh, allow uh, 10 minutes for the payments to be done. This doesn't mean that the payment needs to be confirmed in 10 minutes. We just want to see that the, the payment is uh, is received in, in this window of 10 minutes. And because of people that are using custodial services and usually withdraw money from the exchange, uh, they cannot, uh, they cannot uh, fit in that 10 minute window and this of course causes us a lot of uh, a lot of uh, customer support interactions and so on my guesstimation is that uh, about 50% uh, so half of the people that interact uh, with our uh, crypto payment service uh, actually use custodial wallets and uh, because of that uh, they are not able to fit in that 10 minute window and the second uh, th uh, thing that happens and this is uh, also tend, tend to happen more on the custodial uh, wallets, but it's also um, a feature uh, of uh, people that have their own wallets is that people don't really understand how, what the deal is with these fees that, you, that, that usually the sender pays or the, the people, that, that the person that withdraws something from the exchange. The exchange, if you withdraw, I don't know how many 0 0.005 Bitcoin, it will take uh, another uh, uh, fee and the amount that you, you actually receive to the receiving uh, withdrawal address, it will be smaller than what you requested. So uh, the, this, this is the second biggest uh, problem or, or customer support uh, uh, reason uh, for for uh, contacts from our payment for for the users that pay to our merchants. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah. So custody, I suppose, beyond it being your personal view, that obviously not your keys, not your crypto kind of thing. Yes. Okay, that's that's my kind of personal view as well. Uh, but beyond that, obviously, the custodial solutions are actually causing an issue. You know, with the actual real time payments. Yes. And that's yes. definitely something as well, because like sometimes if I if I have something left over in exchange and I want to use it to pay, I'm always like, oh. You know, I've got to wait for like X amount of time. I've got to pay my fees to get out. It's always just frustrating. Um, yes, yes. So I can completely uh, understand that for sure. That's yes. a huge issue with bit refill as well. Um, yeah. A lot of the support tickets we get are for the exact same reasons. Yes, I, I, I imagine that uh, that uh, every every business that has to deal with uh, with cryptocurrency, uh, and I uh, because of of people, and I. I venture to guess that it's the, this uh, feature of uh, people tending to use um, custodial uh, solutions is not uh, unique to Romania. So I would expect that about 50% of your uh, of your customer uh, requests are, are because of these custodial uh, solutions that don't fit in a window, don't take into consideration fees and uh, I think that that's pretty much it. If this, these two features are, or these two problems are solved, uh, then everything would work in a much or more or less automatic way. You said your company offers a variety of crypto-based services for merchants. Uh, do you guys also offer a Lightning Network payment? process we we don't offer it uh and it's only a matter of uh, not having uh, demand not having demand for it i mean 
uh, crypto uh, lightning uh, services would require uh, locking some funds into a channel and so far based on the requests which we received which was i think maybe once we we received in the last three years a request for somebody wanted or asking if they can pay with lightning uh, based on the level of uh, of requests uh, of, of interest that we've seen uh, it doesn't seem to be so so popular and again it, it kind of makes sense if you if you consider the fact that 50% of the people tend to keep their wallets on exchanges on, or, or on other custodial wallets, uh, then it would make sense that they don't know about Lightning and how the Lightning uh, network work and uh, what's, what's good and what's bad about it. Yeah, I can understand that, I suppose, actually. Yeah, and I, and I guess, because um, I think this is the thing, I think cust custodial solutions... Whilst I'm personally not a massive fan, I've, I mean, I've used them before, obviously, um, but I, I guess they're, they're very important, though, because there's a lot of people, a majority probably, I'd say, of, of people I've met um, are used to, okay, my money is in my bank. If I send, you know, if something goes wrong, someone steals it, something, you know, a transaction gets done badly, someone is going to cover me for this. It's fine, you know what I mean? And like, I don't have to worry about my X amount of money. And that's very reassuring for a lot of people. And for some people, that is yeah. the best way. Some people don't want to look after their own money. And then I kind of, you know, understand why sometimes. Um, so I guess, I suppose what, what uh, the, the solution, I suppose, the, the easy solution would be to, you know, remove like, lower fees or remove fees to, to take funds out of an exchange or from a custodial wallet and also to you know speed up the time uh, to withdraw fees right they're the simple solutions but i guess like what do you think the solutions are moving forward for like you know pulling people away from those custodial solutions and only using them when they have to and, uh... you know in the in the beginning i said that uh, a lot of the of a lot of the money involving transaction, either being money transfers or payments or and, and related services have been de dematerialized uh, in the last, especially in the last 10 years and, uh, and even before. And this prepared uh, the ground for, for uh, I mean, if, if you already have an electronic payment solution and you already pay with the phone, it doesn't really, uh, matter for you as uh, as the person that pays if the money that are being taken uh, uh, are being taken from your bank account or for from a uh, from a custodial wallet. So uh, maybe the, the the only way I I see uh, I see this working is if these custodial wallets are somehow integrated and Lightning Network is is a good uh, it's a good example of integration in which. You cannot really pay less because uh, the the transaction will never uh, propagate, or if in, even if it's propagating, uh, if it's not completed, it will revert after after uh, after some time. And uh, I, I believe that in, in some some services or some developments in this area, whereby uh, you can make things much more integrated and having more services like uh, LNURL and, uh, and you know, seamless in, 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 in the end, you, you need to have seamless uh, transactions. And, and it's true that when, when you take the, the burden of people having to guard their keys and remembering passwords and whatnot, and uh, compare it to the uh, maybe easiness of uh, dealing with cards and, you know, wherever you have a problem, you just flip your card and there is a number. Well, if you flip your ledger, there is no number. You cannot call anybody if, if somebody goes wrong. So people, just because people are... Uh, inherently uh, lazy and this is it's uh, is the human nature why bother with something if i can obtain the same outcome not not having to do this uh, at all uh, because of the uh, human nature people will always prefer uh, the the banks and the custod custody and somebody else dealing with the keys the only time when people start realizing that it's important to manage your own keys is if your bank froze your account because 
whatever and and these these days you you see a lot of a lot and a lot more regulation especially in the in the eu but also in other uh, countries like banning people do specific types of transactions and requiring people uh, justify their uh, their uh, why did you send this money to this business and uh, you know this intrusion intrusion of of the state in 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 the end in in the private lives of of citizen uh, of citizens will have as a as a result people starting to realize but do i really need to provide these details to the government what solutions are there to to not be able, to not be required to do this and people will say yeah but this means that people will uh, will uh, um uh, hide money and will not pay taxes and I, I i i would say that in this case maybe the the tax system needs to be re uh, rearranged and needs to be a new thinking about what's uh, what uh, taxes should mean or, or would mean and how people should interact with the state from the tax point of view and i'm sure that if people would see benefits coming out of their uh transparency about money people would be willing to to not hide their money if if that is even the case which i i strongly believe that it's not i mean everybody i know uh, that that does uh, crypto transactions are much more uh, rigorous about reporting and paying taxes versus a lot of uh, uh, other persons that you you read in, in the newspapers and you see on the news that they use all kinds of uh, offshore accounts and consulting services in order to, to bypass these uh, taxes. So, yeah. Does the majority of, of people in Romania, are, do they have bank accounts or are they primarily unbanked? Uh, they, they have. I mean, it's probably the, the um, uh, uh, unbanked population is less than 20% or, or some, somewhere around uh, this, this figure. There are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of bank accounts, there are a lot of cards. Now, the, the other question is, or, or maybe when we or, or the national bank or whoever reports this number, maybe they should uh, take out uh, of the reporting uh, two transactions per month. Yeah, one funding and one withdrawal. Because if we take this uh, out, we will find out that uh, uh, maybe it's only half of the people that, that have, uh, that could be considered banked because the other ones uh, do a single transactions per month or maybe two because one it's funding like they receive their salary and the second one is withdrawal of their of their whole amount and may, maybe again this is if you think about my my previous point that i made about government uh, uh, snooping around your bank account and maybe even being able to freeze maybe there are people that say why should i left uh, the government or the bank uh, report to the government what I do with my bank account, I will take it in cash because cash is for, for better or worse untraceable. So maybe maybe this is the reasoning behind of at least a part of those uh, of those transactions. But anyway, I, I would venture to guess that out of those uh, that actually have a bank account, uh, a pretty significant uh, significant chunk of them will only have two transactions per month uh, registered to that to that account.